So I think the first question the students would ask is, first, why are they so different? Why are these accounts so different? Because they are and they're not. They describe the same phenomenon, but from two sides of the telescope, if you like. The planter's side in Olmsted, and then the slave side, although Olmsted, as we pointed, tries to give this, this conversation with the, with the slave William as well. So where does, where does reality lie between this image that slaveholders have and this experienced reality that Northup gives? I think another question that students should want to ask themselves is, by reading these documents, how can we best understand the system of slavery, both as a racial system, as an economic system, and as a system of power. Slaveholders wanted to inscribe that authority time and time and time again. Slaves, by contrast, generally speaking, wished to reject that authority. How then, by reading these documents, do we begin to understand how people thrown together in the American South of the 19th century, both lived and experienced slavery. The average plantations numbered about 75 slaves. Most plantations numbered much less. The largest number of slaveholders in the American South, the largest number of slaveholders, only one slave, one or two slaves. Ultimately, what defines slavery in the American South is a very uneasy, uneasy compromise, an uneasy compromise where unfortunately power does lie and lay very firmly with the slaveholders and as Solomon Northup indicates, it rests also with the compulsion and power of the whip and the power of the slaveholders to enforce their will by violence when they so wished. Both texts provide a way of understanding this very, very complex and often extremely violent relationship between blacks and whites in the American South. The texts offer us a way to understand how slavery ultimately worked as a system, how it ended up becoming so profitable as it did. I think the texts also provide us with a way of examining how American racism will ultimately impinge upon the visions and aspirations of African Americans as they go from slavery into freedom.